Hello everybody, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. Today I want to see if I can defend Czechoslovakia at its weakest state. So that means that all of Sudetenland will be taken and half of Slovakia. Or as one of my favorite YouTubers would say, this would be Czechoslovakia after circumcision. Goofy side tangents out of the way. This is my fourth attempt trying this, but I think I'm on to a winner this time. Now the setup for this is going to be very important. Firstly, we are going to select the whole army and turn it to just basic infantry. Next, we are going to delete everything in the production lines except for infantry equipment and a little bit of support equipment. And also one on trains. Research is going to be very generic. And construction, this is going to be very, very important. We are going to build a line of level 7 forts from here in Prague all the way to Brno. Hopefully we can get these to level 10 by the time the Germans attack. That is the goal. The reason I'm doing this is so I can control two states and have the manpower from both. Most other times I try to do this, I try to also extend the line to Bratislava, but that just never never seemed to work out. Actually, I already made a mistake. You're supposed to do the wall on this tile, not this tile, because this tile is planes, which means it's a lot easier to attack. Next, we are going to immediately start on political direction, and we want to get down the democratic path to defensive preparations as soon as possible, so we can get all the manpower of Slovakia before our neighbors take all of it. And now we wait until our eventual downfall. Got a whole bunch of political power from political direction, I'm going to immediately spend it on a chief of the army. Now, ordinarily, I'd like to go for the genius because they get more army experience, however, we really need the defense, so I'm going to go with that. 100 more political power, I'm going to spend that on improved worker conditions. Democratic Bastion is done, I'm going to spend the political power I got from it on a democratic reformer. Because in order to progress to the next one, we have to have more support for the democratic party. Now while we're waiting for that, I'm going to do the industrial legacy so I can try to get rid of divided nation. Actually, actually my fault, I forgot I need to get started on fortification studies because it gives land fort construction speed. And since we do have a few minutes before the Germans come a knock and I'm going to build one military factory. Also very, very important. I forgot to mention this earlier. You want to build a railway across the fallback line because this one is going to get captured, obviously. So you want to connect these two supply hubs. Now that fornication studies is done, it's time for industrial legacy. This is very important if you ever play as a democratic nation. As soon as the minute you have 35 army experience, you want to spend it on relief of command. I forgot and I'll probably pay for it later, but it's very, very good. It gives you good stuff. Engineers are going to be very important to research that. Free trade, hardly have any resources anyway, so we might as well give away all of them. We'll need to import a little bit of steel though, not from France. Let's get it from Soviet Union. Now 70% support for the Democratic Party. We can do Beacon of Liberty, which is a 14 day focus, which is odd, but not unwelcome. In order to get defensive preparations, we need 10% world tension. So we're going to do something else in the meantime, like Joint Czechoslovak Planning Commission. Very important, you don't really want to build any civilian factories, just build military ones since you're going to get plenty from your focuses. Static warfare. Just started researching this tech and then the next one is going to be weapons too. So I'm going to take a sidestep and work towards this focus which gives a really good research boost for infantry equipment. That way I can get weapons too early. And I'm pretty much only producing guns so having better guns is going to be very important. Army logistics. Now which doctrine am I going to go with? Grand battle plan. It's very front loaded with its defense stuff and that's what I need. You know since I'm only using like infantry and engineers there's not really a lot of stuff to research. There's no air, no navy, no artillery. No tanks. I'm literally just researching two things, infantry and industry. Japan is going nuts in China, so that means I can now do defensive preparations. All right, so major mistake. I went up to limited conscription right before defensive preparations was done. I don't know why I did that, but mistakes were made and lessons were learned. Anyways, let's just get more factories. Also, we can now get weapons two in 90 days. Army regrouping expert. I don't know why I did that. I meant to be the industrial concern. Once again, mistakes were made and lessons were learned. So Germany has absorbed Austria, so it's only a matter of time before they walk up to us with their cock in between their legs, swinging it around in our face. So before I lose all the territory and all the factories in them, I'm going to do Czech Technical University because you have to have a certain amount of factories to do it. Actually, what am I thinking? I should be doing... So that in early fortifications first, because it'll give them some low level forts that don't really matter, but it'll give us a little bit of recruitable population. And we desperately need that recruitable population. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish the rest of these before they come for the Sudetenland. So I just, I'm just going to get the research slot. It's just so delicious. Yeah, the German Reich is just firing on us. We did get guaranteed by Britain and France though. That's, that's pretty cool. 
cool. Well, now I know that they're doing the Sudeten land focus, so there's no point in doing these. And I do have the research slot, which is fantastic. So I could do arms export. That'd be pretty good for production, and I do need some of that. Or I can go down this path for maybe another research slot and some land doctrines. Both are very good, but I think this one's a little bit more front-loaded. It's only two focuses, and I think I can get that done sooner. Let's switch my Spirit of the Academy to best of the best. Get a few generals. I think this one's the handsomest. I'm gonna do that guy. And this guy, too. Why not? And now I'm going to switch it back to Bold Attack. Now we have some level 3 generals. And they're actually both very, very good in terms of stats. The Munich Diktat. Let's just uh, take a while to respond. Alright, there's only like a day left. Let's just uh, give it to them. And it's a good thing we got the research slot then because we don't have enough factories to do it anymore. Missing a lot of infantry equipment and support equipment. Thankfully, a lot of people seem to be selling both of those things. Such as Sweden, who is selling my old equipment. You can see right here, created by Czechoslovakia. <laughs> I bought some support equipment from Belgium. Now I have four factories. I'm missing a lot of steel, so I think it's time to stop doing that whole free trade thing. Thank you for the infantry equipment, Belgium. I'm sure you're not going to need it later. And here's the event that's going to kill us, the fate of Czechoslovakia. No. And they immediately declare war. Okay, so we have 84 of this division. It's not good, but we have a lot of them. Hopefully it'll work. We're sitting on all level 9 forts. I've noticed that for the most part, the AI doesn't attack you if you're sitting on a level seven or higher, but they have the last three times I tried this. So we're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna see if I have to re-record this whole thing again. Thanks for the lend leaks. We have made contact and they, they are not attacking. They're not even attacking the empty tile here. Okay, I think I'm finally onto a strategy that works. However, I kind of wish they were attacking me because I'm pretty sure I'd win. I guess this beats losing though. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is extremely boring and absolutely nothing is happening. Let's see if I can bait them into attacking by exercising everything. Is that gonna work? No, well, I'm not gonna lie. There isn't really shit fuck else to do. I guess since they took the last tile, I can finally turn this all into one big front line order and um, plan an ambitious counterattack. So it seems that their strategy at the moment is to just bomb everything. And I'll be honest, it is extremely effective. Lost pretty significant amount of forts and especially railways. Especially since I only have one railway. Alright, though, it doesn't mean anything if they're not going to attack anyway. I actually forgot that Romania was still guaranteeing my existence, so they, they are fighting over here, which is pretty neat to see. I don't imagine they're going to win, but it's nice to see that they're trying. Oh yeah, all that exists of my country right now is this tiny little railway sliver over here. But it's fine, I'm gonna keep working on creating the first computer. Even though my country is completely surrounded by the German Reich, I can still trade with the Soviet Union, which is pretty funny. Yeah, you can see I'm just trading directly over German territory right now. There's nothing else to research, I might as well research Weapons 3 right now. The United Kingdom just invited me to the Allies. Why did you invite me and then I misclick and then ask if I can join and then you immediately say no. Since I'm just sitting here waiting for stuff to happen, let's let's talk for a second about the channel specifically. I want to talk about the channel. So I've been trying to do like different stuff lately, mostly not map games. I've been doing a lot of VR recently, which I've been really enjoying but the channel itself has been doing just frustratingly poorly like most of my videos are getting hardly any views at all i want to ask you guys about that obviously you guys you know the audience themselves know more about your uh watching habits than i would but it's like i've got a thousand seven hundred subscribers right now and i uploaded my a full playthrough of half-life alex it took me like a full week to record and edit i think i did a really good job i think it was a pretty good video but out of 1,700 subscribers, it's only got like 22 views right now. And that's just incredibly frustrating to me. And I just, I want to know, like, do you guys, are you just not interested in that sort of thing? Is that what that is? Like, what? Anyways, that's enough to spare for now. Let's watch Poland slowly die. Well, not slowly. It's, it seems to be very quick. Even better, let's watch Germany completely push through the Maginot line. This is going actually as badly as it physically could. The Soviet Union is going against the Allies. That's that's not going to be good. And France is like on the verge of collapse right now. I, I think I'm going to be sitting here for a very long time waiting for the Allies to bail me out. Well, you know what? I have enough equipment right now. I could probably start diversifying into artillery production. Let's just stick with five factories for now. Or... Yeah, that looks good. Seven. That should give our troops a little bit more bite to them. And hopefully if we build enough, we can start pushing, perhaps. It's definitely going to be a while, though. Now, here's a question actually related to the game that I actually really want to hear the answer to. Now, engineers give you an attack and defense bonus on forts. 
So does this also count while you're defending on forts? Is it, or is it only when attacking? Now you'd assume defending, but defense also increases your breakthroughs. So that might also be why it's there. But if I'm just sitting on a fort, just waiting for someone to attack me, do these bonuses still apply? Will I still get 20% attack? Almost all of mainland Europe has fallen, except for Belgium and Luxembourg. And the Germans didn't use their war goal on them quick enough and it's expired. That's so great. So here's a fun fact about reindeer. They're the only animals in the animal kingdom to change their eye color during the winter months. They change it from yellow to blue so that they can see better in the twilight. Now here's a focus that no one has ever done before, war college, because you have to do all of these 70 day focuses beforehand. And it's really good. It's a, it's a really good payoff. It just takes way too long to get here. You get a lot of really good stuff for getting new generals and you also get a research slot. So that seems worth it. I can now add support artillery. I don't think that's going to really fix our situation. Yeah. Okay, I tried to exercise, see if I can bait them into attacking, and it looks like it's working. And I lost a tile. And that is why I do not play on Iron Man. <laughs> because you see, mistakes were made and lessons were learned. So instead of exercising the whole army at once, I'm just going to exercise one general at a time. Here's an idea. Let's develop an atomic bomb. Here's another idea. What if instead of building an atomic bomb, what if we learned how to build a truck there's still a bunch of polish and allied divisions sitting here in minsk that is actually so fascinating it's almost 1942 and it doesn't look like they're winning either or it doesn't look like the soviets are winning it looks it looks like the uh the allies are winning that is so bizarre and when the soviets aren't attacking they're regaining organization which means they somehow have supply minsk isn't even like a core territory for poland and i don't think they can do air supply at this distance maybe they have a legit sticks wizard and they're just using infinite like they're just using that to infinitely get supplies maybe i don't think the ai is smart enough to exploit a feature like that though i'll keep an eye on that because well there's nothing else to watch anyway we are currently building a truck with no resources this car is actually made out of nothing the united states has joined the war uh, the one time all the invent spam has something useful to tell me please come save me i want to do something else <laughs> the naval invasion sound effect just scared the living shit out of me yeah i don't know if the game knows this but i'm not exactly worried about naval invasions right now the pocket in minsk seems to have expanded rapidly they're stretching themselves way too thin though i think they might be falling apart pretty soon well i say that but they seem to be winning in a lot of places oh never mind yeah they're done for they're still winning in minsk though even though they're attacking from all sides and they just pushed out. Operation Barbarossa has happened. I wonder what's gonna happen to the eternal pocket of allied soldiers over here. Like I keep thinking they're not gonna make it. They're not gonna make it. They're gonna die any second now and then and then they survive anyway. I mean, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's weird, highly unusual. Oh, oh no, never mind. It's finally over. They lasted, what, two years? Belgium has finally joined. You know, I'm just so incredibly bored right now. Let's start an entire offensive along the entire front line on aggressive. I might have really bad troops here, but I've got about twice as many as them. Plus, I have rockets, which are really cool, which should uh, do something. Anyways, let's click the button, see what happens. Well, we've made a pretty significant pocket here, it seems. So we've got a little bit of wiggle room. I have run out of manpower, though, so I need to go up to service by requirement. And look at that. The Germans are finally attacking. Finally. And we are winning pretty much everywhere. We managed to make a pretty decent looking pocket, it seems. But I don't think we can really get much further than this. At least not without any more manpower, which I'm waiting to mobilize. Yeah, that offensive cost me 100,000 casualties. It costed them about three times as many, but that's still like a cost that I really cannot pay. Guys, it has been like an hour of just staring at this. And honestly, I, I don't, I think Germany is going to win. They've taken only a million casualties throughout this entire conflict and half of them were caused by me. The British have taken more casualties than the Germans. Plus, I don't think the Soviet Union is going to come out of here. I'll be honest with all of you. I got like other things I got to do today and I'm just I don't want to wait until 19 like 64 when the allies finally stop, you know, taking their limitless resources and just throwing it in the general direction of the axis hoping that it works. I'm going to consider this a close enough.